Hey y'all, it is Friday the 25th of October. And yes, I am sitting on my back porch in a tank top and shorts. And it is a lovely, maybe 71 to three degrees out here. Did I say what time it was? It's going on, it's about a quarter till 11 right now. Absolutely beautiful, a beautiful day. So, uh, I just, I'm probably not going to be doing makeup today because I'm going to, I'm going to get the little pleasure of keeping my little granddaughter for the weekend. Um, Shirley Temple's twin. Okay, I'm going to cross my feet here and then I'm going to probably regret it depending on how long I'm here. Um, but anyways, there were some things I wanted to share. And, uh, where do I want to begin? Well, how about let's start here. I, this, this might get my wheels mo moving. And if there's anybody new here and I might look nasty or something for your information, I have showered. I didn't have to wash my hair this morning. My face is clean. My teeth are brushed and I have my deodorant on. So I'm good to go. So, anyways, where did my little thing go? Oh, you know, I've told y'all before about this little devotional that the lady that I work for gave to me. And I read in it this morning. And uh, let me tell you, let me say this too. No, this is not about makeup, but, and if you're, and if that's why you're watching this channel is because of makeup, or this video right here. You might not want to stay for the duration because I am sharing some of God's word and whatnot. But on the same note, I hope you do stay and listen for the entirety. And I am going to try to make it short and sweet. I don't want to come across like I'm preaching to anyone. I'm not. Um, I need to be preached to myself. That's why I go to church. And, uh, Anyways, so it might be something that can help you today. Uh, but anyways, it's this little thing right here, and I am going to read it. I don't think I need my glasses because it's pretty bright. But the, the little devotional for this morning came from John 15, 5, where it said, where the Lord says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Keep that in mind. You can do nothing without him. So I'll go ahead and read this little devotional here because it struck a chord with me this morning. And I mean, this is about like me writing this. It says, in my, in my life, there, there are times when I try to act like I'm the whole vine, branch and root. I think life is all about me and my selfish wants and desires. I try to control everything and everyone. Sometimes I try to take control of my life, my circumstances, a situation, or even a person. When that happens, everything crashes and burns. The desire for control and independence stems from a place of pride and the thought process, I can handle it. Biggest joke ever. I hear verses like Jeremiah 29 verse 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And I, and I may smile, but I don't truly realize my plans to the Lord at times. Jesus' statement found in John 15, 5 is profound because it reminds us that we can do, that we cannot do anything without him. If we do not embody our role as the branches and respect Jesus' title as the vine, we strive and strain. We walk through life with anxiety rather than peace. 
everything is a struggle. But Jesus says we will produce fruit when we remain or abide in him. We will flourish and walk lighter. Letting God control our lives and following his direction is the best way to walk. Amen to that. God can lead perfectly, whereas we have a hard time even following him perfectly. Amen to that. Embody your role as a branch and take direction from the vine. Abide in him so your fruit is good and you can flourish as you follow your heavenly father. And then it always ends with a little question. What area do you need to try to release control? From A to Z for me. And it says, Lord, help me to follow your plans. So I'm like, yeah. And I think I've said in some of my videos before, sometimes I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not. Sometimes when you're dealing with something and you feel like a brick wall, you're banging your head against a brick wall and you're getting nowhere. It's at that moment for me, that is when I let it go. I'm like, and I have to tell the Lord, I have done everything in my being to try to fix control, resolve the situation. I am at my wit's end. I don't know what else to do. And the only thing I can do is to give it to you. Okay, so there's that. I have, I grew up hearing this verse most of my life or not verse, let me take that back, not verse, this statement. And I would bet dollar for dollar, most of y'all have heard this too. God helps those who help themselves. Y'all, that is a lie from the pit of hell. I will tell you that right now. That's a lie from the pit of hell. People, I know people, and actually, challenged someone before and they I, I've heard many say it's in the Bible no it ain't in the Bible folks it's not in the Bible you can't find that anywhere in the Bible even in the multiple translations they have out there you can't find that that God helps those who help themselves so and because I've had a, a, a few tell me it's in the Bible no it's not find it and show me and then I'll believe it but I've read it. I don't know it's not there. So, which prompted me from reading that right there to, to back up. No. John 15, verse 5. Let me read it. Let me read it. I've only been on here eight minutes, and I promise y'all I'm not going to be here on, on this video much longer because i got lots to do. But I felt like sharing this, okay? Uh, John 15, Verse 5. John 15, verse 5. Says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And then there's... Um, Matthew nineteen twenty six. Matthew nineteen twenty six says, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And uh, then there is Mark nine twenty four. Okay, and Mark 9, 24, it was talking about where the, the, a father came to the Lord and told the Lord that his child uh, was having very bad health problems or whatnot. Talking about basically he had a demon in him and then several times he cast him into the water, cast him into the fire. 
And uh, the, the dad told the Lord that, you know, have compassion on us and help us. And the Lord told him, he says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Okay, so this was the father's answer to the Lord. And this is me, me, many times. And straightway the father cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. So a lot of times, yes, I know the Lord is very capable. And as I just read, with God, all things are possible. But sometimes we just don't believe it enough. Sometimes we don't believe it. Sometimes I don't believe it enough. And yeah, a lot of times I have to ask God, forgive me. I doubt it. Uh, and I had no reason to doubt. You have brought me through so much in my lifetime. And when I look back at all the things I've been through, you were there for me in the midst of it, bringing me through and landing me on the right side where I no, ha no longer had to deal with whatever the circumstance might have been. So why do we doubt? Why? I don't know. You know. So, you know. I hope that helped in some way or another. You know. Um, let me let me say this real fast because it popped in my head. I did see this video yesterday. And I like, I like that because that's so good. And it was a man. And he said, he said, you know. He said, I struggle with all kinds of things. And he says, I've learned to make this prayer first thing in the morning. And I ask God to get into my head before I, I get into my head. And I'm like, that's a good, good way to start off the prayer in the morning. So, yeah, sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know a lot of things, a lot of times for me, I am not truly thankful enough for all that God does for me. I'm going to say this and then I am going to try and get off of here. Uh, last night, um, everything got done around here and winding down. And I, um, yesterday I went to Ollie's and I got me a little cheap pair of earbuds. Um, probably won't use them that much, but I'm thinking sometimes when I'm houseworking, I want to be talking on the phone to one of my friends or family members or whatnot. And it's hard to hold the phone and work with one hand. Y'all, y'all get it. So I thought I've had them before. I'm going to try them again. So, anyways, to, to try to get to it. So, I, and I'm technically challenged, y'all. Y'all already know this. So, I got my teenage son. I said, Drew, set these up for me. Get them going. Get away. It's yellow jacket season. And uh, so, he got them set up. And just to see if they were working or not, I just pulled up a video. And it was like American Got Talent video. So, uh, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's working. I can hear it, yada, yada. And I proceeded to watch this clip, American Got Talent. And long story short, the caption was, um, top so many that brought the judges to tears. Well, the last one was an eight-year-old little boy and his little six-year-old sister, and then he had a group of people standing behind him. And he sang a song, uh, something from, uh, I don't know. I think it was from that song, Frozen. I don't know, I believe or something. I don't, I don't know the name of the song. But of course, the child got a standing ovation and got the golden buzzard 
But his story was, at eight years old, he had a brain tumor and he was still dealing with it. And y'all cried like a baby. I sat here on the back porch by myself because it humbled me, truly humbled me. I cried like a baby because it was, it was him, his little sister, and then some other children that was singing to that had health problems. It was obvious by the camera being on them. You could tell they had health problems. And I'm like, it humbled me for this particular reason. I thought, you know, y'all know I have 12 kids. And when each and every one of my children were born, we thank God when they were born that they had all their little digits every faculty worked properly and then i guess you could say for me it stopped there you know i didn't continue to thank him and thank him and thank him and thank him for the rest of them i mean i do from time to night still but i don't know it's i'm like still to this day yeah my my youngest will be 18 in November, so technically adult then. So yes, all my children are now adults. But I, you know, I, I and, and I just, I sat there and I was crying and I'm like, God, if I've never thanked you enough for my children being healthy and fit and yada, 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 I'll, I'm doing it now. I said, because when you see things like that and it breaks your ever living heart, I'm like, these poor, poor babies. Oh, I could cry again over that one. Uh, but it's heartbreaking. But uh, it makes you even... And, and I asked the Lord, too. I said, please be with those children that are in the hospitals. The, the ones that have problems. Give them peace. Give them peace. Show mercy. Uh because what else can I do? I can, I can do that for them. But anyways, uh, we gotta be, we gotta stay thankful for all things. And it was like I was telling, I met a new couple yesterday. Uh, they moved down here from Illinois. I think they were from the Aurora area. And we actually spent two hours in their home visiting with them. And they, uh, in talk, where was I going with this? Okay, where was I going with this? Oh, they were, you know, I meant like they're just right over the holler there, valley, and on the other side of the hill, mountain. And they have a beautiful back view too, but they're, of course, they're not up as high as we are, but they still have a beautiful scenery. And she says, I, it's just beautiful here. It's, it, she says, you know, we come from like city life and it's so quiet here. And I said, funny thing is, I said, Ron and I were sitting on our back porch yesterday morning. And, uh, you know, out here before the sun came up, the moon was still out when I got up at four o'clock yesterday morning. And I just, I love sitting out on my back porch and, you know, it's so peaceful. And y'all can probably hear the crows crowing and little birds chirping. The breeze is blowing, the sun is shining, and you almost feel guilty because the condition this world is in today, and you know there's scores and scores of people that don't have these surroundings that I have here. I know a lot of y'all do, and I'm telling y'all, we've got a lot to be thankful for, a lot to be thankful for. And again, I will mention, you know, do I have, you know, when I think about those people up there in uh, North Carolina right now, and like the children that I saw on the video, do I have a reason to complain about anything? No, I don't. But, um, and should I complain when trials come? God told us that through many trials and tribulations must you go through before you enter 
and into his presence. Um, and just this week, my family and friends have been through several trials. My daughter walked out a, a little bit ago, right before I started this video, and she says, Mom, the devil is on a rampage for the month of October. I said, honey, tell me about it. She says, it's like every day, it's something else dealing with somebody, if not me, somebody I know. And I'm like, tell me about it, honey. Tell me about it. I said, uh, I said, but here is our consolation through all these trials. God's still with us no matter what. No matter what. And he will give us a peace that passes all understanding. We, we can't let our trials today take our eyesight off of what's ahead of us. I'm guilty. I do. I do that from time to time. But I'm trying, folks. I'm trying. So whatever you may be dealing with today, just remember God's got it. And I'll tell you, dear, you don't have it. I don't have it. He does. And when you get to the point where, like I said, you feel like you're beating your head against a brick wall, I believe that's when God gets, I believe God's, God gets us to that point where we will totally let go and let God. So I won't hold y'all up any longer. Now it is about, oh, dang, did I say, well, I ha okay, it's 10 after 10. I said it was going on 11 o'clock, so I'm an early bird again today. Yeah, I was out here at 4.30 this morning. I love my back porch. Um, and I love the peace that I'm surrounded with it. I'm very thankful for being where I'm at right now. Uh, but anyways, y'all, hold tight. Don't don't let the devil drag you down. And I, and 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 me. And I do cry to the Lord a lot, and I have in the past. I believe, God, I believe you can do all this, but help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. And he will. So, hope you all enjoy the beautiful day. Um, I'm going to get at it and try to get some more stuff done before Elvis gets home. <sighs> and my sweet Elvis is helping my daughter with the today's crisis. Yep. 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 It happens. So anyways, that's all. That's all. God is good. He's always good. He's in control. Always will be in control. And he hears you. Give it to him and let it go. See y'all.